always imply MTP2. Um, then I think it is useful to make these MTP2 constraints actually explicit um, because they give you so many nice properties uh, when you're estimating graphical models, they induce sparsity without the need of a tuning parameter. Um, you can actually apply them in the high dimensional setting. They might also be interesting constraints in a non-parametric setting for density estimation. Maybe they are broad enough uh, to be useful in applications and constrained enough to get actually good um, density estimates with very few samples. I think there are many open problems there in terms of rates of estimation. Hypothesis tests for MTP2, et cetera. For now we're just applying it when we think that, you know, whenever you would apply it for a, when you have a latent tree model, et cetera. Um, so I think they have like really nice um, broad applications and also very beautiful theory in terms of exponential families, convexity, combinatorics, semi-algebraic geometry, et cetera, et cetera. And now I should um, add in also some acknowledgments. I mean, none of this would have been possible without an amazing group of people, um, particular my group, and then um, also collaborators for the MTP2 part, in particular Stefan Lauditzen and Piotr Ziani, and of course, um, funding. And again, I put in together a whole lot of references that is kind of ordered if anyone is interested in MTP2 so that you actually have them. So thank you very much. So do we, we do have time for some questions. I'll start with one. Could you define the open problem of a hypothesis for MTP2? Like what? So the null is that you're getting samples from an MTP2 distribution, and the alternative is what? It's just not MTP2. That is Gaussian, for example. Yes. That is for example, if I would do it in the Gaussian MTP2 setting. Gaussian MTP2 versus just Gaussian. You could also ask the other question, and so there it's, so if you have like an independent structure already, so I'm just testing one particular face, and then I have an intersection with the MTP2 cone, uh, versus just Gaussian with this particular independent structure. Um, so none of these we have. So but we know it's a mixture of chi-squares in the Gaussian setting. What is the mixture? So the, the null distribution. So I would like to know the null distribution. Of the likelihood ratio? Of the likelihood ratio, for example. So yes. you know how to calculate the MLE for MTP2 Gaussian? Correct. That's easy? Yes. MLE? Yes, that's, um, that's this. That's for MLE with MTP2 with uh, oh, yeah. This is a convex oh, yeah. optimization. So I guess then I have a test for Oh you have? Yeah. Top one. Okay, that's perfect. <laughs> okay, so no more open problems. So then maybe non Gaussian setting. <laughs> so that's perfect. <laughs> And non-parametric? Like, can you? Yeah, no. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> Great. <laughs> yeah, you could change it. Yes. <laughs> So for now, the way we're thinking about it um, is this, right? We want to come up with models that imply MTP2, but then the question is, can we have a description of all MTP2? Like, can, how, how do you construct all possible? Yeah, we don't have. We go through that definition. So we take different models and we go through that definition. 
Yeah, because we only we don't have anything equivalent. That's that would be nice to have. For now, we only have things that are implied by MTP2. So any tree, latent tree model will be MTP2. Actually, with latent variables or without. And maybe I should say, why do I have here this absolute value? So it's really signed MTP2. So think about some kind of, you know, as an example, like if you have an IQ test, right? And you have your questions. So this is, I cannot directly measure IQ, so I, I ask all of these IQ, this, these questions, right? And so now, why do I need this signed MTP2? Well, because I can ask the question so that if you have a high score, it means that you have a high IQ, but I can also ask it so that if you have a low score, you have a high IQ. So I need to be able to switch the sign on, on these. So, so any latent tree model is MTP2 up to trivial sign swapping. But any latent tree model is going to be MTP2. Very interesting. I think of this uh, an unbalanced tree, not the normal. That's MTP2. And Correct. Up to, sign. up to sign switching, right? So, so then, I, so this is another question. It's like, so I, we have other applications where we look at psychology data sets, where you know they look at, they they ask questions to people, and then some properties are positive properties, and some positive, some properties are negative properties. So there, we can easily figure out how we should do the sign swapping, and then we just do MTP2 estimation after that. Now the question is, how do you figure this out in general? Um, so how we do it is so. You can do a, um, to do, um, so you first look at a, at a maximum spanning tree within your, within your variables. So we can show that this maximum weight spanning tree is a subgraph of your true graph, okay? So how we do it is we first do maximum weight spanning tree with absolute values on the correlation structure. And so then we just swap the labels along this tree. Now, this is just a heuristic. We swap the labels along this tree, and then we just do maximum likelihood estimation based on MTP2 there. Well, so that is an open question. How do you actually deal really well with signed, signed MTP2 distribution so that you figure out how to swap the labels? But this maximum weight spanning tree gives you a unique way of swapping labels. That was another question. So, I'm just like, wrap my head around this technique and have Yeah. Yes. Um, so, so say I am in R2. And so I think I understand it in R2, but what if you have categorical random variables? So, for example, you I, told us a bunch of equations for three, right? So, a variable taking three values. So oh, perfect. Does yes. it still continue for relabeling? I mean, if I relabel something as, as, as permute what I call 0, 1, and 2, then is it still MTP2 or not? Yes, so, so this is not obvious. Yes, I agree. And um, what I mean by signed MTP2 in the discrete setting is exactly this, is up to relabeling. There will be one way of, of, labeling, of ordering the categorical variables so that it is MTP2. That's exactly what signed MTP2 means in this. Exactly. So in a latent tree model that is discrete, it's going to be signed MTP2, meaning there exists a way of relabeling so that it becomes MTP2. Okay, so you have to tell me what this structure is and then, yeah. Yes. In no, no, I, I have, I mean, I, I look at them, right, I'm looking at this kind of applications because I'm expecting here that a latent tree model will fit pretty well. If I would just take a random data set, it's in general not going to be close to MTP2. But if it is an application where you really believe that the latent tree model might be a good model for you, then it will be close to MTP2, then, then yes, it should be close to MTP2. And that's how we found all these data sets. But these were always the first ones we looked at in these particular applications. So what is the ordering? It's just it's kind of the same intuition as here, right? It's like I want to make them all be positively dependent. 
So if you know if you're if you have like one variable where zero one two is like it means actually something that's increasing, but in the other thing you know this other variable is positively dependent with this one when I'm flipping the order because of how I'm asking the question or how I'm defining the variable, then that's what I mean by relabeling stuff. It's like here I can have like a high score meaning high IQ or a low score meaning high IQ. So it would be nice to have a good way of actually figuring out this directly. We have one way of doing it, but we don't have any proofs in that sense. Is there a more higher level idea for why MTP2 adjunction is so common and keeps coming up? Is there sort of for us, the only um, intuition is that it is implied by many models that people would use otherwise. Because we don't have a characterization otherwise of MTP2. Just this. All right, I think we can take other questions offline. Let's thank Alan again for an excellent tour. So I need to know about your paper. <laughs> yeah, I can tell you it's very simple. I'll tell you what the test is applied for.